Hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Narconon and Scientology Chronicles. I'm Lucas Catton, and today uh, I'm going to share a story about going to Washington, D.C. with Erica Christensen. She was, uh, is an actress, a Scientologist actress, um, who at, back in 2002 had won quite a bit of acclaim for her role in Traffic, the film with Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, where he played a drug czar and she uh, was her was his daughter and uh, became addicted to drugs and wound up going to treatment and things like that. So her her role in that film wound up getting her um, an invitation through to the DEA's advisory board, and the DEA administrator back then was Asa Hutchinson. So she had a special invitation to come out um, to Washington, D.C. to attend a luncheon at, um, uh, I forgot what the luncheon was, but we were staying at the St. Regis Hotel. And she was recognized as, you know, for her role in the film and for speaking out against substance abuse and things like that. Well, of course, this is Scientology and Narconon. So opportunities like that don't, aren't just left to left to the person who did the role um we had to seize on it of course so rena weinberg the president of able international at the time and greg leclerc who was vice president of celebrity center international and erica christensen and her mother and me and clark carr the president of narconon international we all wound up in DC and we had a series of meetings scheduled to again capitalize on this. Uh, it included press release and the media interview and where you know she's able to slip the word Narconon in there she, where she'd say like I support drug-free programs like Narconon and it was really sort of uh, sly in terms of how you could get how we could parlay her role in that film to getting some coverage for Narconon and of course Scientology. Well, coinciding with that was also um, uh, the National Foundation of Women Legislators was having a meeting at the time. And there was uh, a former member of Scientology named Joy Westrom, who had received a Freedom Medal, which is one of the one of the awards that dedicated Scientologists get for doing something big uh, for the promotion of L. Ron Hubbard or Scientology related stuff. So Joy Westrom and um, her I think previous husband, Rick Pendry, had gotten Freedom Medals for courting the National Foundation of Women Legislators for their Second Chance program, which was a criminon program underneath ABLE that used components of Narconon, uh, but it's all of it was part of Hubbard-related stuff. So Joy Westrom was there with the National Foundation of Women Legislators. Erica Christensen was there f for that, as well as uh, you know, joining the DEA's advisory board. And so we had some, we thought we had some firepower going in there. You know, we're like, all right, we're going to, we're going to get some stuff done. So um, she, of course, handed, you know, information packs about Narconon to Asa Hutchinson and his staff. And we had a series, this is my first trip out to DC as, you know, an, an official role related to, to Narconon. And so it was also like a training exercise for me with Clark and Rena. And one of the, uh, we had meetings set up with several different congressmen's offices and uh, some of his, some of their staff members and things like that. But one of the key things that we wanted to accomplish back then was gaining acceptance for Narconon's drug education program, which wound up getting um, trashed in, uh, in quite a few different media outlets and was a was kicked out of California public school systems by I think the San Francisco Unified School District or something like that, and and so that got national coverage about how the the drug education program was was based on you know primarily L. Ron Hubbard stuff and and not considered sound um, science. So we were meeting with the deputy director uh, of the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention at the time and presenting some of the initial information that we had regarding Narconon's drug education material. And I had spent, uh, back at the end of 2000, I had spent uh, some time in Boston training to do drug education with Bobby Wiggins. And I'm gonna do a whole, a whole video about the drug education program and what's really in it and where it came from and all that kind of stuff. 
So I'm not just talking about it peripherally. I, I know quite a bit. I used to go out and deliver these drug education uh, classes, programs, presentations to thousands and thousands of kids in, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred schools around the country that I had personally been to. And um, so anyway, so there we were in D.C. having these meetings, utilizing some celebrity, uh, you know, firepower, if you will, capitalizing on her recent DEA advisory board uh, invitation, capitalizing on some of the the relationship with the National Foundation of Women Legislators that was helping to secure funding for the Criminon program, the Second Chance program. And this was like building up. And I was out there with Clark and Rena and all these things were going. And I felt like, you know, I felt like, hey, I'm I'm starting to arrive on the scene here in the in the Scientology world. And um, and as as you know, meanwhile, Clark and Greg and I shared a room <laughs> shared a, a room in the St. Regis because our travel budget wasn't anything like other travel budgets. You know, the fact that we were even in the St. Regis was ridiculous at, I, I don't know, even back then it was like, I don't know, $600 a night or something like that. So, so, uh, I think Clark slept in the bed and Greg and I slept on the floor <laughs> or something. It was, I know I slept on the floor cause I was the youngest and, and uh, lowest on the totem pole. But that's that's just some kind of the things like these are these are things that go on behind the scene. Whenever you see any kind of coverage for Narconon or Scientology and any kind of celebrity related thing, these are some of the things that go in the background. There was like weeks of preparation for this visit and who we were going to see and how we were going to spin this thing and leverage that into getting some coverage and some support. And then you get a tiny little endorsement here for this thing that you then somehow bridge over to be an endorsement for that thing. And, uh, you know, part of it was was really clever and but most of it was um was very deceptive because all in all we didn't belong there it was you know we were hiding the actual truth which is our entire purpose was to gain recognition and support for Elron hubbard uh and his drug rehabilitation technology for narconon and thus scientology as a whole to be able to gain government funding, to be able to gain government support, and to be able to convert as many people as possible to become Scientologists. That's the goal. And anything else is, uh, is honestly a lie. So there you go. There's that, uh, that little story. The next one in Narconon Scientology Chronicles, Eric Christensen and the DEA Advisory Board, and our first, my first trip to DC with Clark and Rena. Till next time, take care.